Thank you so much for joining us for another episode of the Encounter Virtual Service. We're so excited to have you with us this morning. And I just wanted to share real quickly a couple of fun things, and then we'll continue on with our service. Uh, the first thing is the numbers from COVID are looking better. And it looks like some businesses are starting to open up. So we will be announcing our, the launch of our outdoor services soon. So make sure you're watching out for that. Also, I just want to take a moment to thank Again, everyone who donated to our canned food drive for your incredible generosity. Uh, thanks to you, we were able to create nearly 40 bags of food to give away to families. And we have some bags left over, so we're going to do another food giveaway on Wednesday. But something really cool happened that some of you may not know about, so I wanted to share that. We were able to connect with an organization called Volunteer Center. And, and basically what happens is they serve volunteer opportunities in the South Bay area. The really cool thing about that is Janice Hahn, who is our LA County supervisor, connected with them and also connected with some of our local restaurants. And so for two of our local restaurants, for people that came on Wednesday to pick up food, they also received a $40 gift card to go out to eat with their family. They could either go to the local kitchen in uh, North Torrance, which uh, actually in Old Town Torrance, or they could go to the Red Car Brewery also, and restaurant, which is also in Old Torrance as well. So it was really great to see the joy in their faces, to know, hey, they got food, but also they could go out and go to a restaurant together as a family. So again, those moments happen because of generous people like you that allows us to be able to serve in our community. For those of you that want to continue to give and support what it is that we're doing here at Encounter, you can do that in several ways. One is you can write a check and you can mail it to Encounter Community Church, 18749 uh, Christian Boulevard, Torrance, California, 90504. If this goes too fast, you can also find it on our website. And speaking of our website, you can also give through that. So if you can go to encountercommunity.church, uh, you can give that way. Uh, also, you'll find it in our description. So you can click the link and you'll, you'll, you'll have it there. And then finally, if you wanted to give via text, then all you have to do is text the amount that you want to give to 424-373-3583. And then just like online shopping, there's a form you know, for you to fill out. And again, we don't use that for uh, spamming purposes or anything like that. But what we will do is at the end of the year, we will send you a contribution record just for, for donating uh, to the church. And again, thank you so much for allowing us to do what it is that we do. Uh, let me pray real fast. Father, I thank you for this morning. And I pray that as we wrap up this series that we've been doing called Launching the New You, I pray that we'll be inspired today inspired to continue to press forward, inspired to continue to persevere. Father, I, I know that most likely there's someone who's watching this service this morning who's going through something right now and wondering, will I be able to make it? So I really do hope that today will be an encouragement to them. And all these things we ask in your name, amen. So again, thank you for those of you that help us out in those ways. For those of you that are looking for other opportunities to be able to be involved here at Encounter, we're going to play our announcements right now. And then after our announcements are done, Ariel's going to lead us into some worship. So again, thank you so much for being here this morning. Again, we are so excited to have you with us this morning. Here are a few things that are happening here at Encounter. Right now, we continue to remain virtual, but with the COVID numbers starting to look better, as well as businesses starting to open back up once again, we will soon be announcing a date to restart our outdoor services once again. So please make sure you're watching out for that announcement. This coming Wednesday from 9 a.m. till 11 a.m., we'll be doing another food giveaway. So if you know someone who needs food or if you are in need of food, please come by the church and pick up a bag and a box of groceries for you to have something to eat. Today at 1230, we'll be having a town hall meeting via Zoom. The meeting ID and the passcode are on the screen. If you are a member of Encounter, please make it a point to join us because we'll be looking at the financial state of the church as well as talking about the future of Encounter. So it's a meeting that you don't want to miss. Next week, we're going to try something different in that we're going to have communion during our virtual service. So if you can go to the store before the service next Sunday and grab yourself some grape juice as well as your favorite loaf of bread, whether it's challah, sourdough, or anything else, 
And then make sure that you have cups, the grape juice, and bread so that we can have communion together during the service. If you want to stay connected to the things that are happening here at Encounter, please text sign up ECC to 81010. Again, it's through the Remind apps. We do not have access to your personal information, but it's a way for you to be in the know about the things that are happening here at Encounter. If you would love to follow along with the message today, then all you have to do is place your phone into camera mode. Aim it at the QR code that you see on the screen. A link will pop up. Click that link and you will have access to the announcements as well as the sermon notes for today. Thank you so much for joining us. We're so excited to have you with us this morning.
you for this morning. God, we love you so much. We worship, honor, and praise you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. So we are in a series called Launching the New You. We started a few weeks ago. And basically, here's the idea of this series, is we looked at coming out of 2020 and moving into 2021, how can we be different? See, in the first message of the series, we simply said this, is that a flip of the calendar means nothing if there's not a flip of our lives. And that's what 2020, going into 2021 is, it's just a flip of the calendar. But 2021 won't be different if we're not different. So the second week, we also talked about like the healing of our nation. It was just after the Capitol riots. And we just talked about how do we bring about this healing so we can, we can heal this divide that exists within our nation. And really, we came to this conclusion is that it starts with us. There's some work that we need to do in us. And as we do that work, then hopefully what we can do is we can begin a grassroots movement to really begin to see change happen. And then the third week, we talked about pain. And we said this, we said that Jesus identifies with our pain. Not only does he identify with it, he feels it. He understands when we weep, he weeps. When we're happy, he's happy. When we smile, he smiles. He walks through our pain with us. And then last week we said this, is that Jesus teaches us the value of life by giving his. And we talked about racial reconciliation. And we said that 2020 revealed that there's still a lot of work that needs to be done when it comes to racial reconciliation. And we just talked about being able to move forward. And again, how do we do that? Is we must be willing to set aside our biases and our stereotypes to be able to recognize people that they're made in the image of God and that also in that to help them to recognize their intrinsic value. So that's what we looked at so far in this series. If you missed any of it, you can go back and you can watch the replay on our YouTube, on YouTube, on Facebook, on our, on our channels there, on our page there, as well as you can watch it on our website. But with that, I just wanted to start off the message this morning with a simple question, and that is, who will have the last say? When it comes to your life, what or who will have the last say? Because here's the thing, 2020 try to make us feel like pain is going to have the last say. Our, our finances is going to have the last say. Our troubles are going to have the last say. So who is it? Who's going to have the last say about the value, about the significance, about the impact of our lives? Who will do it? Who will have the last say? I remember when I was a kid and the Big Mac first came out. I, I know I'm, I'm dating myself, but when the Big Mac first came out, and here's the thing that was really interesting about that is that Big Mac had the secret sauce. And everybody wanted to know what that secret sauce was. I remember as a kid, I, I, I was in Detroit. I lived in Detroit. And at that point, I would shovel snow during the winter just so that I could earn some money, some pocket change. And then I would go to McDonald's and I'd buy a Big Mac or a filet of fish Or I was a kid, so probably both. <laughs> I know you guys are going, oh, Big Mac. I know, I know, I know, but that's, you know, that's the way it was. But I would totally do that. And then it came out that the secret sauce was Thousand Island dressing. And from that point forward, everybody put Thousand Island dressings on all of their hamburgers. <laughs> that was a movement that happened during that time. But here's a question I wanted to ask as well. What's the secret sauce of people? Because there are people that you have seen that have gone through some of the worst things of their life, and yet they still come out on the other side standing tall. What's their secret? How did they do it? What's their secret sauce? And I will tell you that what 2020 revealed to me is that for many of us in America, this secret sauce is missing out of our lives. So where do we find it, and how do we get it? How do we get it? And what is that secret sauce? It's really simple. It's grit. It's grit. In the 1960s, right around the time of the Civil Rights Movement, there was this quote that came out. Many people attributed it to, to Harriet Tubman, but there really isn't any proof of that. People go back and forth whether she said it or not. To me, that's not important. 
The important thing is what it says, because it really is a powerful quote, and I want to read that to you. It simply says this. When you hear the dogs barking, keep going. When you see the torches in the woods, keep going. When you hear them shouting after you, keep going. Keep going. Don't ever stop. If you want a taste of freedom, keep going. I love that. On Instagram, I follow a group called Goldcast. And basically what they do is they put like inspirational stories and stuff like that on their, on, on, on their posts. But also, what they'll do is they'll put really great quotes every once in a while. And I saw this quote, and I just, I just had to use it. It's by a woman named Vivian Green, and it says this. Life isn't about waiting for the storm to pass. It's about learning how to dance in the rain. Isn't that great? I love that. It's not about waiting for the storm to pass. It's about learning how to dance in the rain. How to dance in the rain. So how do we get to a point where we are able to do that? I think it's about grit. It's about developing grit in our lives. But now here's the question. What is grit? And I want to make sure that I'm, when I'm talking about grit that we're all on the same page when we're looking at this. And so with that, I gave you a definition of grit that you could be able to read right along with me. And it's simply this. Grit, firmness of mind or spirit, unyielding courage in the face or, of, of hardship or danger. That's from Merriam Webster's Dictionary. And I love that. Firmness of mind or spirit, unyielding courage in the face of hardship or danger. And as I said before, probably one of the greatest needs in America right now is grit. And how do we develop grit in our lives? So that again, after we come out on the other side of difficulty, people can be able to see our faith and it becomes an example to all. What is grit? And how can we have it? So with that in mind, I heard a song that really inspired me. So I put it in my Spotify playlist. And the interesting thing is Ariel did that song last Sunday, and we hadn't even talked about it. I was like, whoa, you know, th that's just the way that God works. But I asked her, I said, Ariel, can, can you do that song before the message next Sunday? Can you do that song again? Because it fits what I, what I really want to wrap up this series talking about. And so she did it again. And so that's the song. It's called Here Again. Really powerful. And so here's what we're going to do is we're going to walk through the song that inspired me. And I'm hoping that as we go through it and we talk about developing grit in our lives, that eventually it'll be able to inspire you as well. If not, at least to develop some grit in your life also. So with that in mind, here's verse 1. It says, can't go back to the beginning. Can't control what tomorrow will bring, but I know here in the middle is a place where you promise to be. I can't go back to the beginning because the beginning is before all the trouble started. Wouldn't it be nice to be able to go back there where we were happy, where things were great, where things were good, where we all got along? It was, it was amazing. But we can't go back to that. And many times, and even now, tomorrow still looks a little bleak. So in the middle of this sandwich that I find myself, bleakness here, darkness and being wrecked there, in this middle where I am right now, the song says, this is where God is. This is where he is. It says this in Psalm chapter 40, verses 16 and 17. It says, but may all who search for you be filled with joy and gladness in you. May those who love your salvation repeatedly shout, the Lord is great. Ask for me since I am poor and needy. Let the Lord keep me in his thoughts. You are my helper and my savior. Oh, my God, do not delay. But that first line, but all who search for you. But all who search for you. So here's the first aspect of grit. Grit reminds us that we must keep the search light going for God. We must keep the search light going for God. My wife will tell you that if I hear a strange sound in our house, I will not rest until I find its source because it just annoys me. And the scary thing is when that happens at like 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning and it's dark. And we've all seen the scary movie, right? And we all say that, like, like, dude, there's a demon, <laughs> or whatever that might be. Don't go in there. Don't go in there. 
And we all say, well, if it was me, I wouldn't go. Here's the truth. If you heard a strange sound in your house, you would. Because you want to find out what it is. And so I would do the same thing. Except I would go with my flashlight and a bat. Because <laughs> I want to make sure that I'm protected. But I will not rest until I find the source of that sound. And it's kind of the same way. Do not rest until you find the Lord. But here's the thing. You have to decide what you want to search for because here's the truth. If you search for proof that God is not there, guess what? You're going to find it. And if you search for proof that God is there, guess what? You're going to find it. Here's the difference. It's not God. It's our perspective. It's what is it that we're looking for? What is it that we're looking for? Because he is there and he is with us. We just have to be willing to be able to trust that in the moment. So grit, again, keeps the search like going for God. He's with you in the middle of the muck. Here's the course for that song. I'm not enough unless you come. Will you meet me here again? Because all I want is all you are. Will you meet me here again? I'm not enough unless you come. So here's the other thing about grit, is grit admits its dependence upon God. Grit admits its dependence upon God. I remember I was doing campus ministry at El Camino College, and this guy walked over to the table, and he said to me, I'll, I'll never become a Christian. And I thought, okay, I'll bite. I know you want to have a conversation. So I was like, okay, so why won't you become a Christian? And he said, I'll never become a Christian because it's a crutch. It's a crutch. And I was like, dude, no, you're wrong. You're wrong. And I think he was expecting me to say about my strong dependence and independence. I said, no, no, no. It's not the crutch. It is the cast. It's the anesthetic. It's the doctor who sets the cast, you know, that sets the bone. And not only that, it is the entire doggone hospital. <laughs> That's what I said about this idea of this dependence upon God. See, we have this mindset in America that you can't admit that you're in need. But here's the thing that 2020 taught us. For many of us, we could have gotten through 2020 were it not for other people. There was more dependence in others in 2020 than we've ever had, except for maybe going back to the Great Depression. But we can't. We can't do it without others. We need others in order to be able to persevere, in order for us to be able to overcome, in order for us to be able to make it through. We need others. And ultimately, what we really need is God. And we need to be able to admit our total dependence upon him. It says this in Psalm 63, verses 6 through 8. It says, I lie awake thinking of you, meditating on you through the night, because you are my helper. I sing for joy in the shadow of your wings. I cling to you. Your strong right hand holds me securely. I lean on you. I depend on you. I rely on you. That's what he's saying in this passage. I rely on you. I so, God, your strength is my strength. I, I can't do this without you. And I love the, the imagery that is there is one of someone who, whose total, completely, and sole dependence is upon God, that you are the source of my strength. You are my anchor. Again, I can't make it without you. The imagery of this, it, it kind of reminds me, of, have you ever met someone for the first time, and they have a young child. And so that you, they introduce yourself, you introduce yourselves, you talk back and forth, and then you also want to meet the child. So you'll say, you know, hello, little Billy, or whoever it might be. And what is their response? Depending on how young they are, what they'll do is they'll grab their parent's leg, and they'll hide behind their parent's leg, and they'll kind of look out at you, right? Because what happens is in that moment, their parent is their security. That's the one that I'm leaning on. That's the one that I'm dependent upon. My parent is my security in this moment. And so literally, that's what it's saying is, God, you are my strength. I am wrapping my arm around your leg because I am solely depending upon you. I'm depending on you. It, it, it goes on to say, as I walk now through the valley, now that valley, many of us are familiar with Psalm 23, where it says, though I walk through the valley of the, the, valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. That's the valley that this is talking about. Though I walk through this valley, and all around me 
It's I see death, and I am in the shadow of death. Let your love rise above every fear. Like the sun shaping the shadow, in my weakness, your glory appears. In my weakness, your glory appears. So here's the other thing about grit, is grit does not allow emotions to dictate thoughts, actions, and responses. Again, let me say that. Grit does not allow emotions to dictate thoughts, action, and responses. Now, grit does not deny emotion. Emotions are very real, and they're very helpful. It's good for me to know when I'm afraid, because then I can deal with it. It's good for me to know when I'm angry, then I can deal with it. It's good for me to know when I'm frustrated, when I'm sad, when I'm broken, then I can deal with it. It's important for me to be able to admit my emotions. So I don't deny my emotion. That's not grit. That's craziness. So we don't deny our emotion. What we do is we admit them. And we say, here's what's going on. But then what we do is we work through them. So that way we can allow God to give us the strength to be able to persevere as well. It says this in Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 33. It says, but this is the new covenant I will make with the people of Israel after those days. The word, we see the word covenant there. Another word for that is promise. So basically what's happened is the people of Israel are in exile. And so God is saying, I'm going to make a new promise to them. And it says, says the Lord, I will put my instructions deep within them, and I will write them on their hearts. I will be their God, and they will be my people. I love that. I will be their God, and they will be my people. So it's important for us to be able to, again, acknowledge our emotion and what's going on, to be able to trust God in the midst of that. But here's the thing that we have to see about our emotions is, as I said before, allow them to be what it is that they are, but don't allow them to have the power to dictate what it is that you do, to dictate how it is that you think to dictate how it is that you respond. That is the difference. That's the difference. And so with that, we may have our doubts. We may have our fears. Those are normal. And I'm, saying that, I'm not saying that you are not supposed to have them. Like I said before, but Grit says, you know what? God, I have my doubts. But I'm going to push through anyway. I'm going to trust you anyway. That's what Grit says. That's what Grit says. It goes on to say, not for a minute was I forsaken. That word forsaken, it means not for a minute was I alone. Not for a minute was I left by myself. In other words, God was with me. And that's why it says, the Lord is in this place. The Lord is in this place. So here's the other thing. is grit holds on to the promises of God. That's the thing about grit. It holds on to the promises of God. So With this in mind, it makes me think of a story. And the story in the Bible is is of a guy named David. David's probably one of the most famous people in the Bible. Eventually he becomes the king of Israel. But at this point, he's a teenage boy. And he's walking over, and his, his brothers are in the Israelite army. And so he's going to his brothers to bring them their lunch. So as he's walking, he looks over, and he hears this guy come up. And this guy is from another country. He's he's called a Philistine. He's a Philistine from another country. And his name is Goliath. And according to scripture, he's probably about nine foot tall. So this guy was huge. He 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 was a behemoth. And so he comes out and he begins to taunt the the armies of Israel. And he's saying to them, come on, come out, fight. Come on, will you fight me? And it's like, he was like being braggadocious. Like, come on, be in this. Let's let's get it on. Hey, Hey, here's what we'll do. We don't even have to have my army fight your army. Here's what we'll do is you pick a guy, I'll come up and fight that guy. If I win the battle, my army wins the battle. If your your guy wins the battle, your army wins the battle. If you trust your God, you'll send this guy out to do that. And the people of of Israel, the Israelite army was like, nope, I'm not going. I'm I'm not going. So they were all afraid of this guy, except for David. David hears this guy taunting, and he's like, who's this cat? Who does he think he is to talk to the armies of God this way? Come on, you guys, go go fight him. Somebody go fight him. Well, none of you, I'll go. I'll go fight him. And his courage is so inspiring that people go tell the king about it. So then he invites David to come. And so he goes, 
And he told, basically, you're going to go fight this guy? And David's like, I, I will take this guy down. I will fight this guy. I fought lions. I fought bears. I will take this guy down. And so the king says, go for it. But here, take my armor. So David tries on his armor, and David's like, man, this is, this is too cumbersome. This, this is not me. This is not me. So I, I'll just go out and fight. So David grabs his slingshot and some rocks, and he goes out to fight this guy. And so this guy sees David coming. He's like, dude, hey, look, look, look at this. Look who they sent. Look at they, you ain't got nobody better than that. You ain't got nobody better. Come on. Come on. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rump this guy. Like, there's no way. I'm going to rock his world. This, this is, this is it's, it's, it's two hits. Me hit him. He hit the ground. It's done. It's done. So he goes out, and he's like, come on. They couldn't send anyone better. And then here is what David says to him. David says this, and I love this as bravado. David replied to the Philistine, you come to me with sword, spear, and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of heaven's armies, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. In other words, I'm taking you down. And that's exactly what David does, is David takes him down. I'm not afraid. And David takes him down. Why? Because he trusted in the promises of God. And he knew that God was with him. I like to talk about my mom in my messages. And the one, one of the reasons why is because my, my mom is probably one of the most inspirational people I know. And especially when it comes to faith. I, I've seen few people that have faith the size of my mom's faith. And Again, realize my mom was a single mom trying to raise two kids, doing the best that she could, and sometimes it got really tough. And although she wondered how things were going to work out, she never questioned the fact that God was with her. Never questioned that. because She was always a woman of faith. And let me tell you, if you hang out with my mom for any amount of time, any of you that are watching this that know my mom, you, you're, you're shaking your head, yes, she is a woman of faith. Let's have that kind of faith that inspires others. And that faith is a result of grit. And that grit is a result of holding on to the promises of God. It goes on to say in the song, Come Holy Spirit, dry bones awaken. The Lord is in this place. The Lord is in this place. I want to talk about that part, dry bones. See, there was this point, again, this is another example. Israel is still in exile, and so there's, this is a different guy now that's, that's being, that God has chosen to speak to the people of Israel. They were referred to as prophets, but basically they spoke to Israel on God's behalf. And at this point, Israel is despondent. They're done. They're giving up in their faith, and Ezekiel's talking to God about this. And so God brings Ezekiel to this valley. And there must have been a battle in this valley because the, the, the valley is filled with bones. The Bible says they were dry bones. So in other words, they had been out there for a while. Then God says to Ezekiel, hey, I want you to speak to these bones. And Ezekiel's like, well, God, you can speak to them and raise them life. He goes, no, no, I want to speak through you. So you speak to these bones. And so Ezekiel speaks to the bones, and all of a sudden, Muscles start to form on the bones, and then you have a bunch of bodies that are out there. And then God says, look, hey, I want you to speak to these bodies again, and you will speak and breathe life into these bodies. And Ezekiel does it, and all of a sudden, these bodies begin to come to life. Dry bones awaken. That's what it's talking about, is this place where there was death, is God can now bring life. And it says this in Ezekiel chapter 37, verses 11 and 12. It says, then he said to me, speaking of God, then he said to me, son of man, these bones represent the people of Israel. They are saying, we become old, dry bones. All hope is gone. Our nation is finished. Therefore prophesy to them and say, in other words, he's saying, speak to the people of Israel and say this to them. This is what the Sovereign Lord says, O oh my people. I will open up your graves of exile and cause you to rise again. Then I will bring you back to the land of Israel. I will speak life into you once again. I will bring life. 
So here's the thing about grit, is grit never gives up. Grit never gives up. Grit knows that it can never be counted out. It can never be counted out. It never goes down for the count. Many of you are familiar with Winston Churchill, who was a prime minister of England during World War II. And there was this one point where England just kept getting hit by bombings and bombings and bombings and bombings. And so Winston Churchill stands in front of the people and he says, never give up, never ever give up. Many of us are familiar with that. But there's another part of that speech that I wanted to read to you that I think is really powerful and I think it's also apropos for today. And he says this, there was no flinching and no thought of giving in. And by what seemed almost a miracle to those outside these islands, though we ourselves never doubted it, we now find ourselves in a position where I say that we can be sure that we only have to persevere to conquer. I love that. We only have to persevere to conquer. We only have to persevere to conquer. So that's the thing about grit, is grit is never down for the count. No matter how tough it is, no matter how bad it is, no matter how hard it is, no matter how difficult it is, grit is never down for the count. That's the commitment that we make. That's the belief that we have. That's the power of grit. That's what God invites us to. That's how God invites us to live. So I want to invite you this morning to have the kind of grit, again, where you admit your dependence upon God, where you search for him, where you also are reminded of just his promises and you hold on to those promises, that you begin to live out your faith. And with this grit, you do not give up. You do not give up. If we're able to have our grit, then there is a point that we will reach in our lives that we'll be able to make this kind of statement. And you can find it here. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 4 through, chapter 4, verses 6 through 8. As for me, my life has already been poured out as an offering to God. The time of my death is near. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. And I have remained faithful. And now the prize awaits me. The crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on the day of his return. And the prize is not just for me, but for all who eagerly look forward to his appearing. We can fight the good fight, and we can finish this fight well with grit. But there's a principle that's here that I think is really important as well. It says, I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race. Here's the thing about grit that's also really important. How do you hold on to grit over the long haul? The way that you hold on to grit is to realize the truth about the fight. See, if you watch boxing, if you watch boxing, what will happen is you have rounds. And between each round, you have a period of rest. So the boxer will go out, he will do his thing, he will do this battle, he will have that fight, and then at the end of the round, he goes and he sits in his corner. While he's in his corner, he's being doctored up, you know, as his, his wounds are being addressed. Not only that, he's getting water, he's getting coached up, and the coach, you know, his, his manager may be saying, dodge left, dodge right, look for the opening, throw an uppercut here, throw, throw a cross here. And, and so his coach will coach him in that way and, and to, to help him so that when he goes back into the fight, but in order for him to be able to have longevity in the fight, there had to be a period where there was that rest between rounds. If you watch racing, the Daytona 500, the Indianapolis 500, what happens is they don't just flat out race for 500 miles. No, what they do is during the race, they have what? Pit stops. During the pit stops, they address, they address the needs of the driver, they address the needs of the car, they make adjustments so that it can be able to continue to go. So that's the same idea. We need pit stops. The way to hold onto your grit is you have to have pit stops. You have to have moments of rest where you can be encouraged, where you can be coached up, where you can be uplifted, where you, again, you can rest, where you can recover from the battle. Because you cannot have grit over the long haul if you never get rest. 
So with this, grit is the ability to hold firm and persevere. So let's fight the good fight. Let's finish this race. And let's finish well. So let's take the grit that we need and move into 2021 with the faith that can persevere and where we truly can be different. Father, I thank you so much for this morning, for this opportunity to be reminded of your grace, of your mercy, for this opportunity to be challenged about the grit that we need in our lives. And again, I, I pray that this message has been inspiring to someone who's watching who's going through difficult times. So for someone who's thinking about giving up, withdrawing, Father, I, I pray that this will give them the fight that they need to press on, to persevere, to hold on, to do what is necessary for them to be able to have a faith that is an overcoming faith. And all these things we ask in your name.
So I've had those moments when I have reached the end of my rope. And, and I know what it's like to want to give up. I, I know what it's like to want to quit. So, so I understand, for those of you that may be wrestling with this, especially when the weight of the world gets so difficult and so hard. But I just want to remind you that God is with you and that he will walk through this moment with you, that you hold on, you develop that grit, that toughness, that, that faith that is necessary to continue to push forward, to continue to persevere. Because again, the only thing that we need to do in order to conquer is just simply sometimes to persevere. If you would love for me to pray for you, if you could do me a favor, you could just put the praying hands emoji inside of the chat. I'll see that, and I will pray for you. If you would love for me to reach out to you, just put a question mark in the chat. I'll see that, and I'll reach out to you. Maybe we can set up something where we can maybe email one another back and forth. But I would love to be able to be a support to you as well. If you're watching on YouTube or Facebook, please subscribe or like our page. That when we post new things, you'll be one of the first ones to be notified about things that are coming up or things that we're doing or things that we're posting. As well as, I just want to encourage you, next week we're starting a brand new series. Have you ever been someplace and you got more than what you bargained for? Well, you know, faith can be that. And so what we're going to do is we're going to look at the times where Jesus gave people far more than what they bargained for. So make sure that you're here next week as we start that brand new series. And again, just a reminder, Encounter is about three things. Love up. Let's look for ways for us to be able to love God more and more on a regular basis. Love out. Let's look for ways for us to be able to love others. What's one thing that you could do today to love someone more than what you did yesterday? To serve someone more than what you did yesterday? Let's put the love of God in action. And then love in. Make sure that you're investing in yourself. Getting that rest. Getting that coaching. Getting those things that you need so that you can continue to be able to persevere in those moments where you need that grit to be able to hold on. So again, thank you so much this morning. Immediately following this, there are going to be some discussions and questions that will pop up. You can utilize those if you want to have a discussion with your family, with your friends that are there, as well as the announcements are going to play after that if you missed them. Well, thanks so much for being here this morning. God bless you, and we'll see you once again next week.
again, we are so excited to have you with us this morning. Here are a few things that are happening here at Encounter. Right now, we continue to remain virtual, but with the COVID numbers starting to look better, as well as businesses starting to open back up once again, we will soon be announcing a date to restart our outdoor services once again. So please make sure you're watching out for that announcement. This coming Wednesday from 9 a.m. till 11 a.m., we'll be doing another food giveaway. So if you know someone who needs food or if you are in need of food, please come by the church and pick up a bag and a box of groceries for you to have something to eat. Today at 12.30, we'll be having a town hall meeting via Zoom. The meeting ID and the passcode are on the screen. If you are a member of Encounter, please make it a point to join us because we'll be looking at the financial state of the church as well as talking about the future of Encounter. So it's a meeting that you don't want to miss. Next week, we're going to try something different in that we're going to have communion during our virtual service. So if you can go to the store before the service next Sunday and grab yourself some grape juice as well as your favorite loaf of bread, whether it's challah, sourdough, or anything else, and then make sure that you have cups, the grape juice, and bread so that we can have communion together during the service. If you want to stay connected to the things that are happening here at Encounter, please text sign up ECC to 81010. Again, it's through the Remind apps. We do not have access to your personal information, but it's a way for you to be in the know about the things that are happening here at Encounter. If you would love to follow along with the message today, then all you have to do is place your phone into camera mode. Aim it at the QR code that you see on the screen. A link will pop up. Click that link and you will have access to the announcements as well as the sermon notes for today. Thank you so much for joining us. We're so excited to have you with us this morning.